Hello my dear friends, in this video presentation I will touch upon how we need to go about managing a little bit of lens material that tends to get trapped in the Berger space during phaco emulsification. Now let's look at the case from the very beginning. This was a 50 year old male patient who was a journalist and a very good friend of mine for the last 10 years. He opted for phaco emulsification for a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract. The procedure was done under topical anesthesia. While performing the capsulorexis, I take due precaution to make sure that there is a good centration and sizing of the capsulorexis to about 5 to 5.25 millimeters. Following which, an adequate and a careful cortical cleavage hydrodissection is performed in order to cleave all the corticocapsular adhesions and make sure that the lens will rotate. The nucleus disassembly technique is now being performed and my technique of choice is the direct phaco chop technique. I start off by downsizing or breaking down the nucleus into multiple small fragments with the help of my sharp tip chopper. And once I have got adequate number of small size fragments, I then mobilize each of these small fragments, I bring it to the central safe zone and I adequately emulsify the entire nucleus fragment before I move to the next fragment. I take care to see that I mobilize only one piece at a time in order to minimize the release of small bits of nucleus fragments that have a tendency to be carried by the fluid currents within the eye. This will greatly minimize the risk of getting an endothelial damage by mechanical damage induced by the fragments. A phaco emulsification of the nucleus is now completely performed and you can see that what is left behind is a little bit of cortex. I remove this cortex with my coaxial IA Pro and everything is moving ship shape and smoothly up to now when I suddenly catch the posterior capsule. Now upon doing this I immediately release or activate the reflux button which lets go of the posterior capsule and I immediately notice that a little bit of lens matter has got into the Berger space. The most likely turn of events was that the catching of the posterior capsule pulled the posterior capsule upwards, it breached the Weger ligament that protects the Berger space, therefore allowing free access of the lens matter to reach the Berger space. Well, since this lens fragment is not easily accessible to us, I decide to go ahead and implant the CT Lucia lens. I have no financial interest inside the capsular bag. Because of a slight amount of infusion deviation, I find that the posterior capsule is tending to rise up a bit. And this I can feel uh, when I'm doing the visco washout. I'm not able to tilt the lens like I normally do in order to go behind it to remove the viscoelastic. However, I do it with a certain amount of difficulty. I can see that the posterior capsule is tending to rise up. So I quickly remove the viscoelastics, push the lens back into place, remove the viscoelastic thoroughly from the anterior chamber. But I am wondering at this stage that should I leave this little bit of lens matter behind in the Berger space because we know that leaving behind lens matter in the eye can not only stimulate post-operative inflammation, it can cause rebound iritis and you will find it difficult to stop the patient of steroid medication. So with the stromal hydration, I complete the case. And as for the fragment, I left it alone like I have done many times in the past. 
But I then questioned myself whether this is the correct thing to do. And in order to find the answer to this question, I looked at the existing literature on a Google Scholar search. And let me share what I found about retained lens fragments in the Burgess space. Now between the posterior capsule of the lens and the hyaloid face is a Burgess space also called the patella fossa. This space is about 4 to 5 millimeters in diameter and is bounded by the Weigel ligament or the capsulohyaloid ligament which is a ring-like attachment of the posterior capsule and the anterior hyaloid face. The outermost part of the Weigel's ligament is called the Eggers line. Now the ligament prevents the passage of lens material of viscoelastics, triamcinolone, etc. from the anterior chamber into the Burgess space. Now if this ligament gets breached, the anterior chamber fluid and other materials can gain access to the Burgess space. This occurs more often if the zonules are also weak as in pseudoexfoliation. How common is it to find small lens fragments floating in the Burgess space? I think all of us have experienced this at some point or the other in our FACO career. But let's look at published reports. Now in an article published in Clinical and Experimental Ophthalmology 2016, Dr. Andrew W. Cam concludes that these materials can be seen in 50.3% of the patients and the majority of these materials histologically corresponds to lens material or lens matter. In 2020, in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, Dr. Natalia and Dr. Lisa Arbisser noted similar findings when they were working with the intraoperative OCD during phaco emulsification. They said that uh, the visible particles under the operating microscope was much less than what is actually seen in the intraoperative OCT. None of them suggested that there should be any necessity to remove these fragments. In an article that was published in the Ophthalmology in Russia journal, Dr. Shilovsky in 2020 suggested performing a posterior CCC to extract these fragments and he made a study in which he divided the patients into three groups. Group 1 had no fragments and group 2 the fragments were left alone. Group 3 the fragments were removed with the help of a PCC. There was no clinically significant difference in the OCT measured foveal thickness at the end of three weeks in any of this group. And therefore, we conclude that lens matter getting into the Burgess space is not uncommon and does not require removal with PCC. Let's see what happened to my patient. On the second post-operative day, the cornea was crystal clear. There was no sign of inflammation in the anterior chamber and the eye was very quiet. So when we followed this patient up after two weeks under a retroillumination view, the small lens fragments could be seen, but there was no sign of inflammation. Now these small lens matter gets trapped in the Burgess space and it's completely excluded from the inflammatory mechanisms of the eye. It does not contact the iris nor the vitreous and therefore will not incite an inflammatory reaction. This patient also had at the end of two weeks a 6-6 vision with no photopsia or glare. So in conclusion, Small lens fragments or lens matter seen in the Burgess space can largely be left alone and observed. They generally will not incite an inflammatory response nor will they induce cystoid macular edema. I thank you for your attention.